Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Yaritza, and in today's short video, I'm going to be sharing eight must-haves for small group instruction. Now these are things that I used as a pre-K kinder teacher, but can definitely be used for lower elementary teachers. And all of the items that I'm going to mention will be listed in my Amazon storefront, which I will link in the description down below. So if you're interested in purchasing any of the items that I talk about, please consider doing so through my Amazon storefront. I do get a tiny, tiny commission, so I appreciate your support. And I also want to thank Game Note slash Joy Note for sending me four really, really awesome products that I'm going to share with you all. So let's get started. The first product that I'm going to talk about are these double-sided magnetic whiteboards and whiteboards are a terrific tool in any classroom. You can use them for small group instruction, whole group instruction, literacy, math instruction. And I love that these are magnetic so you can easily add any type of magnetic manipulative when you are teaching. I like to use alphabet letters for example so that students can build their names, they can build words. So as you can see, one side of the whiteboard has the handwriting lines and then the other side is blank. So the lines are really great for those young learners that are learning how to write. It gives them an opportunity to practice letter formation, those handwriting skills, and those concepts of print like writing from left to right, leaving a space between the words using uppercase letters at the beginning of the sentence, using punctuation, those are all very important skills. And with these specific whiteboards from GameNote, I do want to highlight how incredibly affordable they are. They sell this six pack that I have here for about $22. And not only does it come with the six whiteboards, but it comes with six dry erase markers and six magnetic erasers, which is really awesome. So it's, it's perfect for small group. I keep my markers and my erasers in this little crayon box so that it's easy to pull out every time. And these whiteboards are your standard size for a whiteboard, which is like nine by 12 inches. And they're very lightweight, but they're also very sturdy. It's really easy to write on them, very easy to erase on them. They don't really leave any residue behind whenever you wipe them. And now that I am an instructional coach and I work with pre-K teachers and pre-K students, this is just something that I keep in my small group caddy, which goes in my teacher cart, which is what I haul all over the different schools that I support. And it's a teaching tool that I use every day. The next item is a class set of magnetic letters, which is a big must-have for any lower elementary teacher. So when you receive this product, you receive all 234 letters inside of this plastic storage box, which is very sturdy but very compact, which I love because it's also something that I carry around in my teacher cart. Of those 234 letters, you have 182 lowercase letters and 52 uppercase letters. And you also receive one double-sided magnetic writing board and three small little dry erase markers and a magnetic eraser. And you also get a couple of question marks and exclamation marks as a little bonus. If you look at the back of the letters, that's where all of the magnet is and the front of the letter is made of foam. You can also see that the vowels are red and the consonants are blue. So that helps reinforce the concept of vowels and consonants. It's especially important when we start teaching kids how to build those CVC word patterns or CVC E patterns. And these can also be used for name building, building vocabulary words, building sight words, um, or teaching those phonics skills like I just mentioned. And if you teach pre-K and kinder students, you know that some students have trouble distinguishing between letters B, D, P, and Q. So a tiny detail that I appreciate about these letters are that the letter Q has a little curve at the end, so it makes it very easy to distinguish. The next item is a set of dry erase flashcards. So when you purchase these, you get a zero through 20 numbers flashcards, and then an A through Z flashcards. And these cards come with a couple of these red plastic rings so it's easy to keep these together. And if you're needing to separate them, you could always use 
any type of binder ring. These are very easy to write and wipe. Now on the front of the card as a way to provide that visual scaffold if a student it still does not know their numbers, that 10 frame in the front is going to have that number of circles that to represent the numeral. And then the back of the card is going to provide them an opportunity to trace the number and then write it by themselves. And it has an additional 10 frame. And for the alphabet cards, again, these are A through Z, but I actually divided mine up into different sets. So that's something you can do if you have just one set you can divide it into different sets and the way that i did that was by classifying the letters into letters that have straight lines letters that have curvy lines letters that have straight and curvy lines and then letters that have those slanted lines and curvy lines and on the front of the card you're going to see the uppercase and lowercase letter as well as a picture to represent something with that beginning sound so for letter t for example we have a tiger and on the back of the card students can practice tracing and then writing the letter t you have the uppercase first then the lowercase and then they can practice writing the actual word and i have been using them as a do now activity so this provides them with a task that they can do right away that's easy sometimes i have my small group settled but i need to go help another group so you know it's going to be a couple of minutes until i can get back to my small group so that way they're not wasting any time they're actually doing something you can also use these cards as a quick letter recognition fluency drill so you can review letters that you've already taught your students or you can review the letters that they're having trouble with and likewise with numbers the next item are these really awesome dry erase pockets i think dry erase pockets are a must in any classroom so when i have these in my caddy i use these activities as they do now as well so especially at the beginning of the year or those students that are still struggling with writing, I have them practice tracing letters, tracing different types of lines, tracing numbers. Whenever my students start learning about CBC words, I really like this activity from The Printable Princess where they have to read the word, they trace it, and then they build it. And for math, the students that have really great number sense, we start adding. So this is a really great activity from Miss Kindergarten where they use manipulatives to practice addition and actually writing that equation to represent. And I can link these in the description. And another really awesome thing about dry erase pockets, in my opinion, is that you cut down on paper waste since you are just reusing that activity and not having to make a copy for each child. So that's gonna save you time and money also in not having to use laminating sheets. So definitely get yourself a pack of these dry erase pockets. Next product that I'm going to recommend are these zipper pouches, which I use to separate my different activities in but i have also seen teachers use it as like organizational baggies so if you need to put away pencils markers math manipulatives it could be used as an organizational tool as well and these baggies are kind of white but they're also a see-through which i like so i don't have to be guessing what's inside of each bag and as i said i use them to store printable activities so right now, these are some things that I'm working on with my pre-K small groups. I have these beginning sound cards, which are from my Teachers by Teacher store. I also have these CVC rhyming word puzzles. It comes in two options. One set is going to have the actual CVC word, and you can find another set that does not have the CVC word. We know that rhyming is a phonological awareness skill, meaning that it is just auditory. But if you want your students to record or you want them to make that letter sound correspondence connection, then it does become phonics instruction. And I have some tier one groups that are working on CVC words. And I like these CVC cards from Natalie Lynn Kindergarten. They're all missing the initial sound, but the students have also been practicing how to segment that initial 
middle and ending sound. And another activity that I recently created are the CVC cards, which are also available with the word or without the word. And segmenting is a phonemic awareness skill. So listening to those individual sounds in the word. So one quick activity that we have been doing using our whiteboards is for students to be listening to that beginning, middle and ending sound and trying to spell those CBC words. And you can also use them for rhyming and for sorting word families. The next item is a clipboard. One of the most important aspects of small group is making sure that you are documenting what you are doing with your students. And an easy way to do that is to make sure that you have a clipboard and you have some sort of anecdotal notes or some sort of documentation where you are keeping track. Now this is a free download in my Teachers Pay Teacher store that I will link down below. And in this sheet, you can document up to six students. You write down their name, the date, what skill you're working on, and just some brief notes. There's also another option where you can document up to four students. And there's also a couple of options for whole group documentation. So that's what that sheet looks like. Very first activities that I introduce when using these clipboards involve syllables. So here, I have some syllable cards and again this is another phonological awareness activity so first we focus on that auditory skill and we use manipulatives to listen to those parts of the words and then the next step is to introduce them to kind of an extension activity so this is a free download in my teachers pay teachers store and it's a recording sheet once students are getting the hang of that syllabication skill I also want them to record. So in this space, they record the word. And we know with pre-K and kinder students, they're just learning how to write. The simple task of copying a word is very beneficial for them because they're learning to follow that letter sequence. They're learning that they have to write from left to right. And it's building that writing stamina. It's helping strengthen those fine motor muscles in their hand. So they record the word and then they can color or we use dab markers to tell how many syllables the word has. So it's a very simple recording sheet and I use half a sheet at first but I also have a full sheet available and I also have bigger clipboards available that we use for recording activities like write the room or maybe if they're working at the word wall or when they are at a pocket chart center so those are times when students can use the larger clipboards to record so the next item is having a large small group caddy so mine is sitting right here and this product is from romanoff and i've been using it for years it is so incredibly sturdy and large all of the items that I have talked about fit very spaciously in this caddy. And one important aspect of small group instruction is making sure that you as the teacher are prepared with your materials. So I highly recommend that you get yourself a large caddy where you keep all of your materials just ready to go so that you're not wasting that instructional time because small group Instruction in particular is so limited and we know that those minutes fly by. So one easy way to make sure that you're maximizing that time is having your materials ready. And now the last item that I'm going to talk about is a rolling cart with bins. This was my biggest classroom splurge ever last school year, but it was so worth it. And I actually wish that I had purchased it earlier. Not only is it a small group must have, but I think it's just like overall a teacher must have because it can help you stay organized. I personally bought the 15 bin one and so in the smaller ones that's how I kept all of my copies organized and then in the bigger bins is where I kept more of my small group materials. These bins just helped me stay sort organized and so I could plan ahead and I could pull the different activities or the copies that I needed for that specific group and that's it for my eight must-haves if you want to learn more about small group instruction in particular i do have a video detailing five tips for effective small group instruction for pre-k and kinder teachers 
And I will also link down below and I will be posting another video on small group instruction that's really going to break it down even further. So it's going to cover how to group your students, how to create your rotation schedule, what types of activities you should be working on, how to maximize your time. So if that's something that you're interested in, please make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss that. I hope that this video was helpful and if so, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. That really helps my video. It really it helps get it out there for other educators to discover. That is all I have for you. I appreciate you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.